game called Buckaroo. And I think I always kept score and I just love doing that. And that's why you're good at math. And that, and that rocking chair we have in my living room, it's her rocking chair. Oh, this is, you can't see it right now. But yeah. Nellie Drews Pugsley, tell us about her singing. She was the soloist for the World's Fair in 1894 or 6 for the Tabernacle Choir when they went back for a competition. And there are very many, many newspaper articles about her. She sang in the Salt Lake Theater all the time. She sang in people's, in churches, not just LDS, church groups and in family parties. Back in the olden days, there were big like mansions around Salt Lake City, and you'd have a bunch of down, like Downton Abbey. It's not like that, and maybe it is in Park City. Uh, and she was going to sing, but evidently the story is that her husband died in 1931, so she was a widow for a long, a long time. I never met, I never met my grandpa, but the story is. Mother said that she lived on 200 West, sort of by West High School, the family home. There's a street there called Pugsley Avenue in honor of the Pugsleys. Evidently, she got on the bus, went to our house up in Salt Lake City, up in Foothill area, and said, I'm moving in. <laughs> and that was how she arrived at our house. She lived in the basement or and upstairs? The ba ba downstairs bedroom was hers. I don't even know what was finished when she arrived because our house was probably six years, no, two, three or four years old when she moved in. So, but she was wonderful and she was, had a wrecked postage, po po posture. Everyone always said how stately she looked and her hair was in a bun, uh, long hair. I remember long white hair that we used to brush. And uh, she died on Christmas day. My parents didn't tell me until after we opened our presents, but evidently she was in the LDS hospital. And it says stomach, I can't remember what her death uh, certificate says, something that could have been, a, but it was a stomach something. So. Didn't Grandpa Oblad also die about Christmas? He died just before Thanksgiving. No, uh, yeah, no, you're right. That was he December died also. December 13th. Mm -hmm. Your dad's father died December 23rd. Oh, 21st. 21st, so. so everybody be careful so at Christmas time. We buried him. And some people Christmas, got married and started new Christmas stuff in Eve. December. That's true. So some people were born in December. Man, I don't know who the She's, um, she, when she got married, she was about 28 or 29, and she was a school teacher, but married women were not allowed to teach, so she had to quit she teaching when she got married. No, they did not. didn't tell anybody for a while. And then, and then, uh, later when Roger became, started first grade, she went back to teaching school, and she loved it. She taught first graders, and I couldn't stand first graders, and she loved first graders, so she had a personality. Every time grandchildren came to her house, she sat them down on her lap and read to them. How many times have you seen me do that? I just don't Every have the attention. Every time I come over to Mo. <laughs> <laughs> They're spinning on Blue Perfect. <laughs> so my mother and I are very, very different. As we were driving up here, we thought, if it weren't a Sunday, we'd stop at Cammy, uh, Cummings Chocolate and buy a chocolate. She I would buy a one going turtle to get chocolate? and one turtle this is a for Sunday. her and one for me. And Dad said she could eat one she chocolate. She would have bought it on a Sunday. Yeah, and she Snowgirls would. ice cream. I, but I it's could, a special occasion. Anyway, she would have a box of chocolate. She could eat one a day or one a week. Yeah. And she was totally satisfied. I can eat one box a day yeah. and I'm satisfied. But speaking of Snowgirls ice cream, my primary, my Sunday school class used to always go get ice cream cones after Sunday school. It was different back then. Yeah, it Nobody was. ever talked about 
you know, I mean, I knew you didn't do bad stuff on the Sunday, but getting you ice didn't cream You go to Sunday fine. school on Sunday, you went on a different day of the week. So, um... We'd get a Sunday on Sunday sometimes. It's well, the hot a spot. Sorry. One of the spot. things Good. I noticed about my mother is that I don't think she complained very much. At least she didn't to me. And every time we went to visit her, she didn't ever say, Oh, why don't you stay longer? Oh, you never come to see me. She always acted grateful for the amount of time I spent with her. And that was it. And I thought that was really good because I don't, I was not a nice daughter. I mean, I was obedient and whatever, but I wasn't affectionate. <laughs> and I wouldn't hug them goodbye if I went someplace. And I never knew what was going on in my life because I confided in my friends. But she didn't ever whine for me. So she was, she was a great person. And my dad was a great person. Basically, my dad was sort of the ward clerk forever. And I remember doing all the kinds of things you do on computers <clears throat> in our living room, making all these little slot cards to pull up the names and the members and counting tithing and donation and things like that and he had envelopes for every single like summer vacation and for this and this and this and this and and bought saving bonds for us when we were young which paid for our college so i think i got my financial whatever from my dad because he was always very careful didn't make a lot of money but you wouldn't know it i mean we we did and we did live in a neighborhood where people had probably more than we did but we and I never asked for anything. My friends all went to Europe for high school graduation and never occurred to me to say, um, are we going, am I going? And I, so I earned my own way from a long time, from early, worked if I needed something and took buses, everything else, one car in our family. So, anyway, that's enough. That's fun to chat. That's awesome. When you were growing up. Well, <clears throat> We had a pet turtle that my, one of my aunts lived in the desert. So we had a big turtle this big. Tortoise? Tortoise, yeah. And it had a had a chain on it, and it lived in the tortoise, tortoise house all, all winter long. I would give it red lettuce to eat, and it just warm, roamed around the lawn all the time. But probably the best story is when I, got six, when I turned 16 and I was able to drive, I drove to the pet store and bought Scott, my, my, my brother, Roger, a dog <laughs> for his birthday and brought it home. And he was so excited. My parents, had, they had no idea what to do. We've never had a dog. We've had cats. Whiskers was a wonderful cat. And so we kept Spot for, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 years. But can you imagine your kid bringing home a dog and saying, this but it's I a present for the other one? I'd the send my kid out the way. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Yeah. It, was, it was a good dog. And, Let's do and it, Cat Roger Ellie. was a, okay. is a good dog. I'll buy you one for your mission. Mm -hmm. You gotta tell that story. Tell the story about the crusts and the kitchen table. Uh, our kitchen table that we always sat in had this little rim under it. And I hated crust. So every time we ever had any bread anything, I would just put it up and put it under the rim. Of, nobody ever knew. They thought I was being a good girl and eating it all. I don't know who ever discovered it, but anyway. Somebody did because they gave you payback and gave me a pick, they gave you a picky eater. So. I thought that Grandpa went under to fix something and I, saw the crust. You don't know? I, not that Grandpa. Not that like grandpa your thinks, dad. Yeah, I don't know. My father was was a actually a wonderful person when you think about it. He finished our basement, and he drove down from Salt Lake once a week or a couple times a week. Brought all the stuff, did all the stuff all by himself. We didn't ever ask him to, and I was thinking, I can't believe it. you you used to roller skate in the basement. Yeah. And they didn't have YouTube to learn how to do it. <laughs> and so for him to just give us a gift like that, I was kind of amazing. And I don't even know if I said thank you. He didn't even make you pay for the sheetrock and everything. I don't even remember if we paid. Um, I imagine we tried to, but I don't even remember if we did. Huh. So That's pretty I, and cool. And you think he installed? We didn't have a bathroom down there, did we? To start with? I don't think we had anything down there. Well, Karina and I slept in some yeah. room with and just... Yeah, we had wheat cans around for decor in, yeah. the, in the bedrooms, I remember. Yeah. Anyway. Poetess, and we have got a book of her poems, Lavinia, Lavinia, Pasco, Oblad. Lavinia? Lavinia. 
Pasco Oblad. Okay, and that's she, this and is... she. Um, she also has a number of musical numbers. I've got copies of music that she has written you know, with all the accompaniment and all the song. And so, evidently, according to her her story, she sent them in for publication, and they were published. So she burned them all. Oh, she's <laughs> but my dad mad. has enough copies of them that he printed a book. It's called Poetry of the Native. My grandpa was probably like my mother. He was the blacksmith, part of, the, but he also he built a children's playground in his backyard. Wow! And he would have like things to play with, and they had a big dog called Spot. And their house, my aunt Marjorie lived in their house until maybe three or four years ago, and and. It, she she sold it and she died. But so that house on Stanton Avenue in Salt Lake City is where they they were all they were Swedish and partially my grandma is some Danish and you know my dad and my grandpa did not have good English and I always wondered why my mother never corrected them hmm. because you know. As a child, sometimes you know whatever, but then it occurred to me they were so such fresh immigrants that they were mirroring what they'd heard in their house. People trying to learn English, that's right. and that's why it always sounded okay to them. My mother's history genealogy is British, so she was naturally. So that was an insight to me to figure out why some people, you know, sometimes you just don't have good English because you don't care. Right. But my dad would always say things that would be great. I mean, how my mother, why does my mother say anything? Anyway. That's interesting. So. Tell uh, us that memory of you had a grandma, because, or great grandma, this is great grandma. I remember Oba. visiting in her house, the, say, I think that house is still there, and I can see, still see her in her bedroom lying down and holding my hand and saying what a sweet girl I was. And she died very, I was two or three. And when I looked at her death certificate, I think it said cancer of the stomach or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know what was wrong with her, I just knew she was sick. My grandpa, her husband, smoked a pipe. And he always showed, and I, so I love pipe smoke. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, you didn't think of it back then as something that, whatever, that was just my grandpa. How old and, was and my grandpa's the one that made the canes. Oh, he we carved have a cane. stuff. He was very handy, and he carved all those canes that we have. So, anyway. and how old was were you when he died? Probably about what does it say? Can you read here? You probably can't read. I think it was about November 16, 1971 to 1942. Forty? No, that's my grandma. 1950. 1950. So I was eleven. So, and what did he die of? I don't know. I have to look at his death certificate. Huh. He was probably pretty old. He was probably in his 70s. <laughs> yeah. This is the coolest spot in the cemetery. You have a whole view of the U and the whole valley. Actually, my grandmother Pugsley, I think, is the has lived the longest of any of my... Except for my mother. The singer? My, yeah, Nellie? she lived to 85. Oh. And then my mother lived to 93. But other than that, I don't think that there were a lot of... Like one of my friends, her sister's... 95, 96 right now, Gail Dudley's. Oh yeah, that's amazing. 